As you can tell from the gray speckled walls behind me, I've once again found myself in an airport, but this airport is different from most, not only because it's playing smooth jazz, but also because it contains... A Hank. Huh? The side of my face has been bruised by the hat that I've been wearing. It's also a little warm in this airport. Did your head get too big? No, my head's the right size. It's your head that's too big. No, but like, did your head get bigger and your hat stopped fitting? Hmm. Is there a disease that makes your head bigger? There is, Hank. Thanks for mentioning it. <laughs> hey, Hank, what's the embarrassing story that got cut from the podcast that's your most embarrassing story ever? I don't think it's that embarrassing, but everybody I tell it to is like, no, you can never say that out loud. Okay, then you just tell it. Tell it. I'm ready. It's time. You've, you're one of the people. No, the time has come. No, actually, I've decided I'm too embarrassed. I knew it. I mean, look, the second most embarrassing <laughs> thing about Hank is that he faked a British accent for a full year when he was a teenager. What was your favorite class that you took in college? Mine was about the emergence of Islam in Central Asia, which is a little bit niche, but it was a great class. I liked all my classes except for physical chemistry. That is not how I felt about college. <laughs> Have either of you ever considered getting contact lenses? I got contact lenses for a little while when I was in high school. They yeah. hurt my eyeballs. I just don't like the way I look without glasses. I feel like I'm not myself. Yeah, no, we're total space aliens. Ready? Mm-hmm. This is music is making it very hard. It feels like we should be slow dancing. <laughs> Would you ever consider writing a novel together? Yeah. No. I'm surprised that you said yes. Now I'm thinking maybe the answer should be yes. Yeah, because there would be really great spaceships and also great love stories. Oh god, I don't want to write a love story set on a spaceship. Can I just have it be a room, but then the room is happens to be in a spaceship? <laughs> the whole story takes place in a room? Yeah, like they're in space prison or something. That's the yeah! Space prison love. It's what it's called. It's the name of the book. It's happening. Based on my current writing pace, <clears throat> look for it in 2031. <laughs> Did you, do you want to see the text message you sent me where you were like, I have a great idea. I did. That was a great idea. <laughs> That was a million dollar idea, and I, my feelings are hurt that you're even going to read the text messages if it weren't a million dollar idea. A novel that's comprised of a single 52,000 word YouTube comment. That is a great idea, and it's a free idea. I'm sending it out into the world. <laughs> Would you want your collective portmanteau to be jank or Han? Yeah, the collective portmanteau thing is for people who are like in love and dating. Like Benefer. Yeah. William H. Macy and Felicity Huffman. Are dating? They've been together for like 30 years, and their couple name is Philium H. Muffman. <laughs> what would be your Patronus? Like a little baby bear. Tiny little baby cub. A little, yeah, a little cute little cub. He's really new. He falls over sometimes. Oh, mine would be a very old fox. Like an elf. <laughs> If you're, Are you if you're kidding missing me? your inflatable crayon. <laughs> Somebody left an inflatable crayon at the checkpoint and that's cause for a, a, yeah. a full airport alarm. It's 100% some mom somewhere was like, oh, thank God we left that inflatable <laughs> crayon. Hank, why does my cat smell like a diseased goat? You should get that checked out. Why do you know what a diseased goat smells like? 20 years from now, what would you say to someone who wasn't alive about what now felt like? Oh, I don't. It felt very... You know what it... It felt like starting a lot of sentences, <laughs> but not knowing how to finish them. <laughs> Hank, it's so fun to be on tour with you and Catherine. Thanks to everybody who's been here. Thanks to the Madison Airport for being so accommodating and also for their uh, really smooth, smooth jazz. I will see you on Friday, but also now. Let's go eat food. <laughs>